In this video, we're going to create an open P VPN server on a PFSense firewall. Now, among the different things a VPN allows you to do is access local resources on your own internal network. So the scenario is going to be this. We're going to have a private web server set up on our internal network, and we're going to create an open VPN server that's going to let us uh, access those resources. In this example, I'm going to be using an Amazon AWS EC2 instance to do so. So OpenVPN requires a method of authentication. And in this example, we're going to be using certificate-based authentication. Now, this is going to allow us to get more familiar with uh, things like uh, certificate authorities, the generation of certificates, and it gets us more acquainted with those topics. So the first thing we've got to do is generate the certificate authority. Now, the certificate authority is the entity that validates the server's identity to the client and the client's identity to the server. Now, certificates can be a complicated topic. Understanding certificates means understanding public key encryption, PKI, and all that. But for this project, I think it's just enough to apprehend the concept of mutual trust. The server validates its identity to the client and the client proves its identity to the server which is in a way that goes beyond just using simple passwords so let's go ahead and create our ca you'll go here to system certificates authorities and then you want to add your certificate authority so let's go ahead and give it a descriptive name i'm gonna call it snow crash uh, ca method internal certificate authority um, and that's for this particular network and um, can leave all this as is. So then we want to set the strength of our encryption and we'll keep it as the default just for the sake of simplicity. Lifetime, we want to change that to 365 days. And um, let's go ahead. We'll leave the common name of internal CA as is. And uh, then we want to save it. So there's that. So now we have a system in place that can authenticate user certificates and prove itself to connecting users. Next thing we want to do is actually create the certificates. So now let's create our server certificate. We're in this screen right here and we want to go to certificates and we want to add a certificate. Next thing we want to do is just give it a descriptive name. Um, we're just going to call this um, Snow Crash CA Cert. The certificate authority, of course, CA, and we're going to keep the same security uh, encryption values for that we had there, but we're going to change this back to 365. We'll go here, change this common name to Snow Crash IC for internal certificate. And of course, we want to make sure the certificate type is a cert server certificate, and that's all you need there. So we can save that. And the next thing we want to do is set up our user certificate and the OpenVPN user. So we're gonna create our VPN, our OpenVPN user and their certificate. So we wanna go here to system user manager <clears throat> and we're gonna add a user. All we need to give them is a username and a password. So username, we're gonna call it hero and the password, we're just gonna say hero, hero. And hero, hero. So there's that. Um, and that's all you need to create your um, of a VPN user. Next step is to create our user certificate. So we go back to system certificates and we want to add a certificate. We're just gonna call um, this one uh, Snow Crash User Cert. And next thing we do is keep um, all this stuff, the certificate authority, of course, CA, keep the encryption stuff the same, change this to same lifetime, common name, just gonna call it Snow Crash User. And then of course, this is a user certificate and you know, we done. So we got, now we have our user certificate. So next thing we need to do is create the OpenVPN server. So let's move on to that. So now we're gonna create our OpenVPN service server. This is a lot longer than the other steps, but let's get to it. VPN, open VPN. And we're gonna go ahead and add a VPN server. Description, we're gonna call it, uh, let's call it uh, 
Snow Crash VPN. And remote access here is going to be it's going to, server mode is going to be remote access SSL TLS because we're just using certificates and port. We want to leave that as 1194. Now let's move on down to the cryptographic settings <clears throat> and the ones we need to be concerned with. So when you ensure that uh, TLS key is and automatically generate, these are enabled per the um, P of sense documentation. This is set forth as a best practice. So we want to uh, follow that. And then of course we want uh, the peer certificate authority to be the one that uh, was created earlier because this is how the server will validate itself. And the next thing we're going to go down here, Diffie-Hellman parameter length to 2048 and then um, auth digest right here is going to be SHA-256 because that's how we set it up earlier. And then the next we're going to move on to tunnel settings. So we go down here and the things we need to be concerned with for this demonstration, the IPv4 tunnel network. And uh, per the PFSense documentation, we want to use a subnet that's not already on our no local network. And our local network uses a subnet of 192.168.200. You know, slash 24. So we're just going to set this to 192.168.201.0 slash 24. And then we want to check this redirect IPv4 gateway, which just forces, like it says here, all client generated IPv4 traffic to the tunnel. So, you know, with VPNs, you got split tunnel and full tunnel. So this basically turns it into a full tunnel VPN. And then there's just a couple of other configuration options we need to be concerned with. We go down here to um, advanced um, configuration and UDP fast IO, um, PF since. Uh, is rec this is recommended to improve performance, so we'll take it. And then we're going to go down here and make sure we have IPv4 only selected because we're only using IPv4 traffic. And that is that. So now we've got our open VPN server. And this is what I forgot to select right here. Um, we have to give it a, a server certificate, so there it is. So anyway, and that, that is actually everything. Now we've got our open VPN server and we can go over here to status uh, system logs. Yep. What we'll be looking for is uh, initialization sequence completed and we know that the server is uh, up and running. So there's that. So the next thing we need to do is create some firewall rules so that people can connect to us and um, <clears throat> people on the network can connect outward. So next thing, we're going to go here to firewall and rules, and we're going to go over here to open VPN. Let's go ahead and add a firewall rule. And all we need to worry about here, address family needs to be IPv4 protocol. We're going to set to any, and then we go here. The source is going to be um, network. And we want to use that subnet that we created earlier. 192.168.201.1 zero slash 24. All right. Description, we'll just say uh, Snow Crash VPN. And there we go. So we've got that. And now we need to go over here and create a WAN rule. So with this, the things we need to be concerned with are the address family. Protocol needs to be UDP. Um, source is going to be any, and the destination needs to be WAN address. And we're just going to set the port range here. We can go down and select Open VPN. There we go, 1194. So now traffic can come to uh, the VPN from the internet. And we've got that, so we'll just save that. All right, there we go. So now we've got our firewall rules in place. So the next thing we're going to do is install the client export utility. This way we can export the, um, the files that will be needed by the open VPN, open VPN client on the machines that are going to be connecting to our local network. So now we want to go here to system package manager and go for available packages. And we're going to look for open VPN client export. we go we got that so we'll go ahead and install that confirm there 
There we go. All right. So the next thing we want to do is export this uh, client configuration. So over here to VPN, open VPN, client export, and we're going to um, select the one that we want to export. So this is going to be, um, we're going to be using an Ubuntu system to connect to, uh, to the VPN. So we want to go here to um, just grab this VPN configuration, save it to the desktop. And there we go. So now we've got our uh, VPN configuration. So the next thing to do is load up the Amazon EC2 instance and watch it connect to the network. So what we have here, got the Mint machine on the local network. IP address is 192.168.200.16. And here we've got our local Apache instance running with uh, just welcome to the corporate homepage. Then we've got our EC2 machine running, which we're going to use to connect to the VPN. So first we need to get um, OpenVPN installed on this machine. So uh, sudo apt install VPN. Yeah, sudo apt update. All right, and then install OpenVPN. And of course, we've got to, um, we're going to use secure copy to send the, uh, the OpenVPN client configuration file over to this machine. So here we go. We're going to use SCP secure copy to copy over what is a converted PPK file. Um, Putty uses PPK files for their key files uh, to connect over SSH. And we have to convert that into a PM file for connecting to the AC2, EC2 instance with secure copy. And then we have the VPN configuration file and then our username, password, and then the directory we're going to copy it to. So here we go. And the open VPN file has been copied. So now what we can do is actually connect to the VPN and watch this thing work. Let's get rid of this. So right here, what we're going to do is run sudo, or just so you can see, it's there. Here it is, the pfSense configuration file. So we're going to do sudo open VPN, and then the file is going to be pfSense that, and we're going to run it in the background. So we've connected to Snow Crash here, and we have our IP address but we're on a local subnet for that network. So we should be able to, to connect to local resources on, resources on the network. And we'll see here, we're gonna use the IP address that we got earlier, 192.168.200.16. Okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and connect to the HTTP server on 192.200.16. There. So as we can see here, we are actually connected to the local area network by means of VPN. And that's pretty much all there is to this. We've um, looked at creating our own VPN server and we've connected to it. We've connected to local resources using that server. And uh, I think that's pretty big. And it just goes a long way to getting experience with PFSense firewall and doing cool things with certificates and all that good stuff. So. Um, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see you pals.